Hello, everybody. Um, I decided I would put together a little video over the lab from yesterday. Some of you evidently were getting confused on the instructions and exactly what you need to do. So let me uh, share my screen here. Um, I set myself uh, up as uh, my own student account so I could show you the way things will look from you rather than from me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have a bunch of different stuff up here eventually because I'm doing this both for your class and AP Physics. Um, so the one you want is the one that says intro, intro to motion graphing, uh, motion graphs ping pong ball. And now you just click on view. This saves automatically as you go from question to question. So there isn't going to be any uploading. Um, there isn't going to be any saving that you need to do. I can just get in and see your work. It's, it's kind of like OneNote. Um, so as you go through these labs and answer the questions, sometimes you need to submit. Sometimes you have to submit one section before you go on to the other but you don't need to worry about saving your work. It just happens as you go. So there's this getting started section that I'm gonna actually skip through. Um, you do need to do all that, right? Submit these, it, you get a, a few chances, right? Just by finding the right answers, hopefully you can figure out how to use that measuring equipment. Um, this is the part that, that got kind of confusing. I was hoping that it would actually help most of you figure out what you need to do. I think some of you got really confused with it. So we're actually gonna skip that completely and I'm just going to show you how to do that out of the collect data and make graph. Uh, so you weren't supposed to do anything in this other than use all those directions down below here. So let's see how this works. So here are the tools we're going to need. Uh, there's a, a ruler, which you'll need to have down here so you can see what's going on with the, the ping pong ball. And then you also need a stopwatch. Um, that you can move kind of wherever you want to. Um, there's a frame counter. In terms of actually moving the video, um, we're going to do a lot of these that have videos on them because we can't just, we don't have the equipment to do it ourselves. Um, if and when we make it back to the school building, we will probably still be using these because some people will be at home at the same time some other people are in the classroom. And it would just be easier for all working off the same labs. But in any case, kind of that dark black bar on this is a slider you can slide back and forth and, and pick different parts of the video. The... Um, triangles with the little lines by them are frame by frame. Right? And as we do this, I mean, there's a bunch of frames up here now. Right? It, 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 it counts how many frames are in this video, right? And the other one is, is backwards. This resets the whole thing back to the beginning. So it's play. And there's also a pause. There's a frame by frame forward frame by frame backward, right? And for this lab, what we want to do is probably get the ping pong ball when it's first coming out and put zero there. We want the ruler kind of down so as the ball goes across, we can measure it. We probably also want to reset the time to zero right there. If you didn't, that's fine. If you've already like, got the lab mostly done and didn't do that, that's okay. But uh, we'll set that to zero for here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, we need to measure two things, right? We need the time and we need the position. Right. We're, we've been uh, dealing with some graphs for a little while with uh, the motion maps and making graphs from those, and we'll talk more about those in class today, um, but that's what we need to do. The units on these, uh, we measure time in seconds. The variable is just kind of a shortcut for that, right? Usually it's, it's the first letter of things. For the position, our ruler measures in centimeters. Um, this is kind of a weird one. Our position is X. Right, which is really weird when we get to the graph because we call this X for position, but we actually graph it on the Y. And I know that sometimes really confuses people, but X is just a physics shortcut for position. It's like our variable that we use. And they use X in algebra a lot for stuff. Well, in physics, X is just used for position. Now, kind of the weird thing is with, with this happening this way, and we're going to try to actually, by the time we get done with this, find the speed of the ball, these numbers are going to be huge. So in physics, what we normally do is change centimeters to meters. And you could do, so we need a column over here too, that's going to be position, but this one is going to be position in meters. You can't quite read all that because of the, the dots, but there you go. So instead of doing centimeters, we want to do meters. That's kind of, we're still using X as our variable for position, but we almost always use meters in physics instead of centimeters. It's just our standard unit for things. Now, for those of you that, that know, right, to get from centimeters to meters, we divide these numbers by 100. If it was 100 centimeters, it would be one meter. 
right? Or if it was 120 centimeters, it'd be 1.2 meters, right? So what we're really doing is taking this decimal and moving it two places to the left. If you want to set up these two columns and just do that by yourself, you can do that. What the instructions had you do is make a column where the, the computer just does it for you. And if you want to do that, right? Which by the way, I don't know if you can see this little save thing pops up here, right? Pretty much every time I type a number in, it saves my work. So that's what I mean. It saves automatically if your computer crashes or whatever and you need to get back in or if, I don't know, Chrome freezes up or something freezes. Every time it saves this stuff, you should be able to get back to pretty much right where you were. Um, as I was saying though, you can have the calculator or the computer calculate this for you. Underneath here, it says change column formula. And what we want to do is we want to take this, the, the position column, the second one, and we want to take all those numbers and divide by 100. That's how we change from centimeters to meters. So our position column is all in centimeters. If we divide those numbers by 100, we will get the meters column. And then it just starts doing it for you. Right, so I don't, I don't really care if you find that all too confusing and just want to move the decimal two places and divide by 100 yourself, you can do that. Otherwise, you can set up this calculated column. Once again, you click there, change column formula. You click this X column just once and then divide by, the slash means divide by 100, and then that will set up that column for you. Okay, so let me get rid of these numbers. That little save thing popped up there again. Um, so then you go and put these numbers in, right? What you'll do is, is pick five or six spots. I don't really care where in here, right? You just go one or two, whatever, and then find the front position of the ball. In centimeters, it will be, I mean, estimate as much as you can. I, I guess the way I set it up, I would actually even let my first set be zero and zero, right? Because it was, I set my time as zero and the position is zero. Now for this one, I guess I'd say the position is probably 16 centimeters and 0 0.00077. We need to leave all of those decimal points there and see it changed from uh, centimeters to meters for me already. So find five or six spots and do that. Uh, and then it's going to start posting this graph down here just so that things work out and you can actually see everything that's on the graph. What you'll need to do, first of all, is we don't want the position in centimeters over here. So we click there. We want the one that's the position in meters. And the other thing is, I had done this yesterday and it saved my work, right? All of these dots are going to be really tiny down in the corner unless you click this gear and do auto scale view. That will automatically make your graph fill the entire piece of graph paper we have here. Otherwise, the dots are going to be all tiny down in the corner and you can't really see what's going on. So on the graph part, you'll need to change this side to position in meters, like I just did. You need to click this and do the auto scale. And then they'll be down here interpreting your graph. They're going to ask you some questions. And you know, this part's jumping around a little bit. I'll just show you up here. You need to click this, do curve fit, and do linear, because this should be pretty close to a straight line, and say done. And that will give you this line, and it gives you all of the numbers. Right, and I've just got two points, so this may not be accurate, right? You'll need to do, when you do five or six points along that, these numbers start getting a little bit more exact to what they really should be. Um, the formula for a line is we always use Y equals MX plus B. I'm sorry, this software says AX plus B, but A is going to be your slope, right? and B is going to be your Y intercept. And see, this number is already 207. If we tried leaving this in centimeters, it would be in the hundreds of thousands, or be in the thousands or tens of thousands, whatever. So um, that's why we changed this to meters to actually do our math with. So that is that. Um, they're asking about the equation down here. Well, to write the equation, what you need to know is, is not what is y, but what did we measure in y? So over here in, in the y, this is the graph we actually use. Yeah, this this was their, their fake graph. I should probably even take that out of there, right? We measured position in meters, right? So that is Y. What did we measure in X, right? For our X, we measured time and seconds. 
So our Y is actually position, our X is time. You've gonna, you're gonna have your slope number, whatever that happens to be, right? So with that, you can create your own formula. And that's what it's talking about down here is, is how do you find your formula? Uh, so hopefully that will help out a little bit. Um, yeah, your slope numbers aren't gonna look like this because we've changed it to meter. Uh, I mean, just turn your slope into a for every, right? So the quantity of the vertical axis, I'll just help you through this number seven, right? The position in meters goes up, and then you put your slope number in here, whatever it is. For mine, it was what, 200 and, we'll say that's 208, we'll round it off. So the position in meters go up, goes up 208 meters for every one second of time. That's what the slope represents, right? B is the y-intercept. For us, it was, it, for mine, it was zero. Yours may or may not be, right? And that's just kind of where the, the ball started, uh, where, you, where you put your ruler, right? If you put your ruler right up against the end of the pipe, your y-intercept will be a bigger number because the ball started, you know, moving a little bit. So hopefully that'll be enough to kind of get you going on this a little bit further. You will have the rest of the class Friday to kind of go through this. Um, really needs to be done so that we can... Uh, take a look at, at this lab and then also a worksheet I'll explain today so we can continue going on. Thanks for watching.